Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and this is my look at Basic Fantasy 4th Edition. This is the print release version. Let's roll it. One of the things that pops out right away about Basic Fantasy RPG 4th Edition is that it's got a lot more pages. It's got 201 pages versus 3E's 166. And this increased space is there even though the 3.5 SRD uh, OGL has been taken out of the book. This is the first Creative Commons release of Basic Fantasy RPG. Now, there are a couple of reasons why the increased page number exists. The first of these is because the font size for the basic text, for the paragraph text, has been increased somewhat. This makes it a little bit easier to read, and I very much appreciate it. It does affect some of the word wrappings, uh, so it's going to push some things further down inside the document. But the bulk of the increase in the page numbers that's because of all the new artwork that has been submitted for fourth edition BFRPG. It is amazing to watch what this community has done as they have an opportunity to contribute to this game that doesn't charge them anything in order to play it. People want to be involved in this development process. They want to be involved in this community. They want to be involved in the project in any way that they can. And that's really cool. Art is not easy to come by, and artists really do deserve to be paid for what they are able to do. So it means something, I think, to the basic fantasy community, but also to Chris Gonerman, that so many artists are willing to donate their time in order to make basic fantasy RPG be the best looking it can ever be. And that's really, really cool. There's also some changes in the way language is worked inside this book. Instead of saying he or she in different areas, it's just going to use the singular they, and I applaud that change. That's really well done. There's also some improvements to the text, like now when a further section is referenced inside the document, though this is not in totally throughout the entire book, there's some places that have been missed at this point, but there are page numbers given instead of just see this section. It's now see this section on page so-and-so. And that's a really helpful quality of life improvement for the book. One of the cool reorganizations that I did see is for holy water and for oil. These sections have been moved to the rules covering grenade-like missiles, and it just fits there. That's where they belong. Again, really good minor change, but it's an improvement in quality of life when dealing with the book. It's a really good job by the editors for this fourth edition. One of the coolest things, because Wizards of the Coast actually surrendered in their OGL battle, is that spell names did not need to change. This was a big struggle when fourth edition first got announced. How do we change the name to be compliant with going to Creative Commons while still helping people recognize what spell this is because folks have a mem muscle memory in their brain and that's what they're going to think of it as. And when Wizards of the Coast surrendered, actually totally capitulated, uh, now that doesn't need to happen. All the spells can remain the exact same, which is really easy on that development team. So I'm really thankful that that happened. That doesn't mean there are no changes to spells. Uh, a lot of the spell descriptions have had paragraph breaks inserted into them. This makes it much easier to read. It's not just a wall of text with, you know, different topics as you move through. There are now paragraph breaks that are going on there, and that does help contribute to the increased page count for the book. Uh, but also there are some changes in the way the spells are handled themselves. Uh, confusion now takes a D10 roll instead of a D20 roll, which changes the map just a tiny little bit. Uh, cure disease has the language improved for describing what a cure disease is able to do, and it also has now an explanation for the reversal of the spell, and that's really helpful. 
A cool other little quality of life improvement is for the teleportation spell. Instead of a vertically oriented table, it's now a horizontally uh, oriented table, and it reads a little bit better. I very much appreciate that. But mostly the spells are pretty much the spells that you've already known and loved. Now, there are some new creatures in 4th edition, as well as some new names for older creatures. The coolest of these are the Barklings. Now, when the OGL issue was first coming up, Basic Fantasy thought they were going to have to completely redo Kobolds, and Gabe Bua uh, came out with this wonderful Schnauzer-like character, hearkening back to the idea that Kobolds were dog-like, and... Uh, Chris Gonerman loved it so much that even though we don't have to change kobolds now, he wanted them in the book, so that's where Barklings came from. I love this drawing, and I just think that uh, I would love to have these cute little animals that are just, like, awful and, and would, would totally, like, just stab you through the gut. And you're like, oh, but you're so cute. Ah! And it's, the Barklings are awesome, and they're coming into my game as soon as I can fit them in. They're really cool. One of the cool things that happened as a result of the changes that Chris thought was going to have to happen in the game were that dragons now have new names. Instead of their old chromatic and metallic names, uh, they are given descriptions as to where they tend to live. Uh, cloud dragons, I think they're either silver or gold dragons, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, desert dragons are blue and forest are green and ice dragons are white dragons and mountain dragons are red dragons and plains dragons are yellow dragons and sea dragons are gray dragons, and swamp dragons are black dragons, and you see all the cool dragons that are there. I don't think yellow dragons were in the original third edition. I'll go back and check for that. There's also some new elementals in the book, which are really fun, although they don't have the same link to that old concept of the four elements. They're kind of new editions of it. So you have cold elementals and lightning elementals and metal elementals and wood elementals, and these things look brutal and wonderful, and they're a great inclusion to the game. Probably my favorite new creature is the Iron Bane. This is more than just a reworked rust monster. That's part of the Creative Commons now. Yes, uh, but these Iron Bane creatures are like alternate rust monsters that have long legs that can hop and jump around, and they look absolutely terrifying for anybody who's wearing metal armor, and I need to throw these at my party really soon. I love the artwork for the Iron Bane, too. They're really, really cool looking. I cannot wait to see what characters do when they encounter these things. One of the other improvements inside the bestiary is that all the things like green slimes and gray oozes and yellow yellow molds, uh, they've all been moved to the jellies category. And so they all appear under jellies now. So it's like a green jelly and a gray jelly. And this is just an easier way to find them. I want to find a jelly type thing. Look in a jelly. And there you go. It's not a huge change, but it's pretty cool. One of the things that people have asked me on my channel and I've seen asked repeatedly on the Basic Fantasy RPG Facebook group is, how much does this change the game? Can I still keep my three e-books and play fourth edition? Now, this has been a key feature for Chris from the inception of Basic Fantasy RPG. You can use the first edition Basic Fantasy RPG and play just fine in third or fourth edition. That is not to say that there are not a couple of rule changes. There are two that are big player facing. The first is one that I saw and I just jumped for joy because it, it just makes so much more sense uh, from a playability standpoint. In third edition, coins were that old school one-tenth of a pound. So every 10 coins was one pound. In fourth edition, every coin is one twentieth of a pound. So now you get 20 coins for a pound. You've just doubled your carrying capacity for carrying treasure. That's awesome. I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to drop that one on my players. They'd be like, whoa, we can go get hordes. This is going to be great. And they'll probably celebrate. At least they better. Or I'll throw them, throw them at a dragon. Um, and anyway, the other rule that has changed or at least been clarified is in the optional section. And this is for death and dying. It was a little bit unclear before if you had a save versus death and you successfully saved versus death, 
um, how far could you move? You were stabilized, but you had zero hit points. Could you get moving somewhere to get out of danger? And then if you were playing with negative hit points and you actually had magical healing and you got to zero hit points where you just popped up on your feet again, you could start moving like normal. That's now been clarified. Whether or not you are stabilized as the save versus death or stabilized coming back up to zero hit points, uh, you are down for the count until you get back above uh, zero hit points. So you might have to have a second magical healing in order to get on your feet and actually move normally. I like that clarification. It makes going down in combat uh, a lot more risky. Uh, and I think that is exactly how the rule was intended to be played originally anyway. And that clarification is actually really, really helpful. Should you get Basic Fantasy 4th Edition? I mean, run, do not walk. Is that a good way to put it? First off, the PDF is free. Go to basicfantasy.org, go to the downloads page and download released candidate version 114 and check out this new edition of the game for yourself. You lose nothing except time and that's great. And when the books come out in print, Chris sells them at cost. This is not a for-profit enterprise. So you can get a new book for $5, $10, $15 at most. And from reading on the forums or from the Facebook group, I do know that Chris wants to have multiple books that are coming out in the fourth edition family, if as it were, uh, on the moment of release. So you'll have I don't know what the other books are going to be. There might be a field guide and the new Equipment Emporium. I really don't know what's going to be coming out for that. I can check with him. But uh, when this comes out, go ahead and buy it. It's a great game. It is a lot of fun, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. Just as I said with my third edition review, this is a game you can afford to buy books for everyone at the table and say, here, enjoy, and they will. I find that amazing. So I am going to be working on my recap of my Shadow Dark actual live play that we ran. There's a lot of glitches in there, but I've got enough that I can actually do a recap and show you some highlights of it. This is a fantastic game that I hope people will back on Kickstarter. I've also just finished reading the Cypher System core rulebook, and this has my brain thinking. I might have to do a review of that one soon. Until we see each other again, folks, happy playing, everyone.